ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and today we're going to talk about Overwatch. Yeah, it's been a uh, couple of weeks since the last Overwatch video, and uh, in keeping with the holiday season, Blizzard has released a new comic set during Christmas. And this is certainly making waves across the internet already for many reasons, and we're going to talk about them in this video. As you've no doubt guessed from the title, the biggest thing is the reveal of Overwatch's gay character. And no, this is not a completely new character, but in fact one that has been with us since the beginning. Tracer has a girlfriend, or at least it would appear so. Blizzard has stated in the past that LGBT characters did exist in Overwatch and would be revealed soon enough, and here we more or less finally have it. So of course, this is big news across the internet because Tracer was something of the cover girl for Overwatch for a long time. She was one of the main characters that were in the spotlight during Overwatch's pre-launch marketing phase, even being the main hero character alongside Winston in Overwatch's first reveal cinematic. The comic begins with Winston lamenting spending Christmas alone at the old watch point in Gibraltar. And in the first few panels we see Tracer is running late, linking up with Winston as she's rushing to get to the store to pick up a last minute present. While on her way, she sees a man calling for help as he's just been robbed. And she hesitated at first, but in the end her conscience won out and she stopped to help him. It costs precious time however, and she arrives just in time to see the store close. Using her accelerator, she darts around the mall to a different entrance and gets in anyway, only to have to give up the scarf to somebody who was already waiting for it. Disappointed and empty-handed, she heads on home. While on the way to the train station, a young girl, the daughter of the man she helped earlier, stops and hands her a wrapped present. But of course, this is the point that everyone is most excited for. Back in her apartment, we are first introduced to Lena's girlfriend, Emily. Emily is just making a couple of hot chocolates for the two of them, while Lena explains how bad things were in London and how she wound up not being able to get Emily a present. Emily mistakes the gift on the table, the one that Lena received from the family she helped, as being for her, and it turns out that this was the scarf that uh, Lena wanted to buy in the first place. Of course, happy with her present, Emily kisses Lena. Now, this scene is significant for two reasons. One, of course, being that we now know that Tracer is either lesbian or bisexual. But also, there's another thing about this scene that you may have already noticed. And no, it's not Tracer's boobs I'm zooming in on here, but rather something that isn't here at all. We can see here that she's not wearing her chronal accelerator. Unless she has a more compact one that she can wear on the clothing, we can safely assume that she doesn't need to be wearing it all the time. Initially, when her origin story trailer was revealed, it seemed like the chronal accelerator was a necessity to keep her anchored in the present timeline, but it now appears that this might not entirely be the case. But I'd like to know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. Does Tracer still need the chronal accelerator all the time or not? But there's also more hints about Overwatch lore that are revealed in this comic as well. We get a unique insight into the personal lives of many characters in the Overwatch universe. We see that Winston spends most of the holidays alone, but we can also see what life is like for many other characters on the next page. We see that Genji and Zenyatta spend their time in what appear to be quiet meditation at the Shambhali compound in Nepal. Genji appears to be writing something, perhaps a letter of some sort. Farah is having dinner with an older gentleman, probably her father, and Roadhog and Junkrat are joyriding outside Luna Park altogether. For those who uh, are not aware of what Luna Park is, it's a big theme park that is in uh, Australia. So yeah, that's a, that's a very uniquely Australian thing, so it could suggest that the two of them are back in Australia again. Hanzo is looking at a cake in a store counter with a young boy near him. Does Hanzo have a son, perhaps? We now see McCree passed out drunk in a bar while Sombra sips a drink from the other side. Widowmaker visits the grave of her husband Gerard, adding more proof to the idea that she is not as cold-hearted as she would like everyone to believe. Reinhardt and Brigitte visit Torbjorn and what appears to be Torbjorn's wife and children. And believe me, that's a lot of children. Anna, Mari and Jack Morrison sit together in a dingy room, probably a hideout of some sort, while Jack looks at an old photo. The photo appears to be of Jack himself and another person with short, dark hair. And giving the 
the proximity of the panels anyway, I would guess that this may be an old photo of himself and Gabriel Reyes, now known as Reaper. And of course, Reaper stands in the shadows watching a family from afar. Now, I'm not entirely sure which family this is, but you guys are welcome to guess down in the comments below. But finally, the panel that might fuel the flames once again of the shipping wars, the panel with Mercy. She appears to be in a field hospital reading a letter, and if you think back, which other panel did we see a letter in? Well, it's the first one with Genji. Genji writing a letter, Mercy receiving a letter. His panel is at the top left and hers is at the bottom right, signifying distance. Could this be a subtle hint that the Genji and Mercy romance is real? Let me know what you think down in the comments. But what I think this shows is just how alone everyone else has become too. Sure, some aren't truly alone, but with the downfall of Overwatch, all the former members have been completely separated from each other, with a few exceptions. But ultimately, I see this as being a tribute to all those who, for one reason or another, can't spend the holidays with family and friends, and while the reveal of Tracer's sexuality is going to be the topic of conversation for most people, it's still worth noting that the rest of the comic is just as significant to the lore of Overwatch as well. We've not had such a personal insight into the characters as a whole up until now, and I have to applaud the writer Michael Chu for doing so. After all, we've managed to connect with the stories of many of the characters, and now we get a closer look at how they see the world and what's important to them. But there's still a few questions left unanswered for me, and I can't quite figure them out. Why are McCree and Sombra in the same bar? Now, it appears to be a bar in Dorado, but beyond that, I have no idea why they're even together. Of course, McCree is passed out drunk, so he might not even know Sombra's there. But nevertheless, it is a very interesting position to put the two characters in. And who are the people that Reaper is watching? Could it be his wife, now remarried? An old romance, maybe? And lastly, who is in the picture that Jack Morrison is looking at? Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you're like Tracer and you're struggling to find a last minute Christmas present, don't forget to check out Green Man Gaming, get yourself 20% off of all the latest games using my link in the description down below. My name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.